Well good day everyone, it's Warren and Colleen here from NQ Explorers. Welcome to our video. Today we're in a very picturesque country location as you can see, it's a beautiful spot. Um, and what it was is a railway station on an what is now an abandoned railway line that was built in the 1880s and like most branch lines was abandoned in the 60s. Now, but this particular location, why have we come here? This particular spot on the line wasn't the ultimate end of the line but there's a lot of activity here in the late 1800s into the uh, 1905 1906 period I'll explain why later but uh, what we'll do uh, this is our first visit to the site I've just researched it uh, I've got old aerial photographs but they only go back to the 1940s so there's nothing uh, in evidence uh, from the early settlement of the period but I do have a very old photograph from the 1890s of the site of the station and it gives away quite a lot, so we know where to look. Uh, failing that, we, well, we've probably got five acres of public reserve here, so there's plenty of land to use, and uh, this could uh, very well become quite a lengthy series of videos, hopefully, with some nice finds that'll keep you entertained. Anyway, let's get started. Okay, so they've got the Garrett AT Max with the smaller five by eight coil, simply because of the target cluttering here, and that we need that kind of target separation that, that uh, Double D provides. Colleen's running an Apex in multi-frequency, also with the 5B8, which is the ripper on that machine. It's a multi-frequency coil. Just an example of what this little coil will do for target separation. There's iron everywhere here. I just got this, which is a 60 signal, repeatable. It's obviously a wheel of an old toy car or an old matchbox toy or something. So at this railway station, we had a, uh, a couple of railway houses, as was the norm, uh, because it was a major uh, end of line destination for a short period of time before the line was extended. So we've got kids playing and those can pass off their toys. Well this is an interesting piece and I'm pretty sure I can identify it from the tiny scrap of a relic that it is because I've got one at home. This blue paint, we've got a double axle and a uh, fifth wheel turntable. I'm pretty sure that's the Matchbox uh, road train. I think it was a guy warrior uh, with hovering ham written on the sides of the trailers. That's definitely what it is though. That's the uh, the frame of the prime mover cab which was here. You've got double axles, you've got double wheels there. And that's the uh, the fifth wheel where the, um, where the first trailer hooked on. So it had that cab, prime mover, two trailers and a dolly. I've got it at home somewhere. I'll put up a photograph of what that looked like but that tiny little scrap of relic is I'm very confident that's the matchbox toy that I'm talking about. I'll clean that out and we'll get some... It'll have Made in England by Lesney in there. Nice one. Okay, we just got our first coin from the old railway station. Penny. Clearly. Oh, it's a Commonwealth penny. Uh, so that'll be a KG5. Well, that's in great. Look at the patina on that thing. 1934 I think it is. I'll get some close-up pics of uh, our finds at the end of the video so you can actually see these but I'll, and confirm these dates. I think that's 1934. That's a ripper. Beautiful old coin. Okay, target's dried out. I better to run back and get the camera from my previous dig hole. Looks like we've got silver and it looks to be it's got roots growing through it. I, I think it's some sort of chatelaine I think they call where you have the the chain and then there's a series of things hanging off it it's definitely silver it's a lovely high 80s target um, with some sort of what appears to be art deco period design on it maybe I don't know I can't see any hallmarks well there may be one there okay another one that's another subject for close-up photo but that wasn't far from that coin I just got it was uh there's possibly more of it in the ground, I guess. I know these chatelaines were uh, used by Chinese diggers uh, in the 1870s and 80s, often for their opium implements. So, you, uh, so I have seen chatelaines, not found per might be personally with like a sixpence or a, um, a threepence holes drilled in it, chains on it, and you'd have uh, cleaning implements for opium pipes and that kind of thing. This may be that. I'm not quite sure what sort of jewellery that is. It doesn't look Chinese, of course. It looks to be Art Deco. So I'm thinking 1930s. Anyway, we'll see if we can get a uh, hallmark off the back of it. Okay, Colin's got a mystery item. Oh, it's 
brass. Oh, it's like a top of a screw. Yeah. It's been, it's, the shaft's sheared off maybe. Uh, it looks like, this looks like um, flat, as if it might have been a little cap for something. Okay. You know, just screwed on. What was the target it's idea on that? Um, so I think it's in the 60s, yeah. 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 As you can see, Colleen's got Apex. Are you a multi frequency or a 20? Yeah, the multi frequency. Okay. Yeah. Well, I just got another awesome find from a site of what I believe was the old, probably the station master's house. Um, one little patch is producing a lot of stuff. I'm also getting ceramic and old, uh, like, bones, uh, meat bones, uh, chops and uh, steaks and that kind of thing. Have a look at this find, it's a ripper. Okay, it's more toy related fun. I don't know the age of this, but it's an absolute ripper of a find. It's a motorbike and sidecar. And that is really old. That is not, to my knowledge, a matchbox. It could be a dinky or a corgi. But it's quite a large scale job and it's complete by the look of it. Might be a Beezer or a Royal Enfield with sidecar. I know it's English because, as you can see, it's right-hand drive. <laughs> Australian, English. That's a ripper. I'll give it a bit of a clean, but we'll get some nice store photographs of it at the end of the video. Right, that's as much as I dare clean it here uh, in the field. Look, all the spoke wheels are complete. It's, it's complete. I'd say that's a corgi or a dinky. Unless it's a... I don't believe that Matchbox built this. Look, I'll, I won't clean it now. I'll take it home bit of warm water and a soft toothbrush and we'll get a name and we'll be able to date the find. I'd say it's 50s or 60s but uh, I know from the aerial photographs of this site that there was n absolutely nothing here by the 1969. So it's pre that. No one was waiting for trains here in uh, 1970, 1980 so that's an absolute ripper that one. Still got the I must say though, that blue looks like a matchbox blue. Anyway, let's not guess, we'll get the name off it and we'll do some good still pics of it. Okay, Colin's moved into this spot where we're getting this concentration of targets. We've got uh, two coins, a Chatelaine, and a couple of uh, beautiful motorbike and sidecar. And what do you got here? Looks like another penny. The, the signals, there's so much, because there's so many targets, we're not getting real clean signals, are we? No, it wasn't, it wasn't a good but signal. we we'll get a lot of iron masking. That's a nice one, that one. Interesting to see what the year will be. Yeah, Is might it, have to clean what, it. Can, okay, well, we'll give it a clean and we'll be back shortly. Let's give it a bush clean. Okay, there we are. We'll do some still pics later. Beautiful Commonwealth King George V 1924 penny. Lovely patina under that... Uh, black clay but we'll give him a clean and uh, it'll look lovely when it's cleaned up. Just a bit of gentle soap and water, we don't do anything, no uh, no abrasives or any uh, chemicals of course, just water. And sometimes we even leave them like this in the display, that's how we dug them, that's how we leave them. Righto, what have we got here? I've got a marble, it obviously it wasn't detected yeah. but it's in the clump. So you're working on a target, that's a beautiful yeah. old marble, look at that. Yeah. Definitely, we've got, we do have a very old photograph of this site and there was a large old Queenslander style home here. And see that's probably what five... five oh, well that's the depth down. isn't it? That's yeah, the depth. Yeah. So the marble's four, five inches underground. Mm. Very nice. Yeah it's not chipped or anything. No. It's lovely. How's that uh, Garrett digger? It's got a name but it's I don't know what it's called right off the subtitle that. Yeah no I like it. it it's uh, keeps all nice and compact and easy to, yeah. to use. Quite you know nice and strong when you're lifting it. Yeah. Sort of. I mean we can't often use these kind of no. recovery tools in the places we go but here it's soft, soft. moist we've had so much rain that's it's usable yeah. usually it's like concrete out here yeah. righto nice one we've got some pretty little wildflowers there along the fence line that's the boundary of the old uh, railway property you say you're getting ceramic and things yeah I guess got a bit of ceramic just here but this looks like a bit of uh, glass does that look like that crystal that they used to make milk jugs out of or is it just the glass is no there? but look how thick it is it's very old. Oh, right. so yeah, it's a definitely an old bottle. Oh, well, a fragment of an old bottle. But I got ceramics through here. You can see we're, di we're digging there. Yeah. We've just got to remediate it and flatten it again. But uh, that's where we're getting coins and toys. The oldest coin, well, you're 1924 pennies, the oldest one, I think. 
but they'll be able to coins in that in here. As you can see, the boundary fence of the old railway easement, it's still a railway easement, it's a public reserve, is uh, a railway line. Actually, there's no, uh, usually got the roll gate on them, but not even on that one, but I'll look down the, further down the fence line, see if I can get a date off these rails. They should be 1880, 1890s. Right, I'll just sit down for a breather. Colin's still going on that patch, which has been a hotspot of targets this morning. Um, we've got three coins. Look at that silver shuttle lane. I think it was a shuttle lane. And a couple of toy cars, and Colleen picked up a marble. I can see she's sort of waving to me over there now. She's probably got something else. So that is a tiny corner of this site. We've probably covered, I don't know, 20 square metres of this large site. So there's plenty to come from this... Uh, pretty little spot it's a beautiful day today it's uh it's not warm uh but it's comfortable to be detecting it's about 24 degrees there's a slight uh there's a cool breeze from the south um in the middle of summer this is going to be tough because there's not a lot of shade here but that won't stop us but anyway more about the site um as with most of these pioneer railway lines all over australia or any railway line for that matter it is, is it of course uh, built in stages and generally it's built as uh funds are passed through uh, approved through parliament there's a railway act and lands requisitioned and that sort of thing for the crown and then you have the construction period now uh, of course queensland was not a wealthy colony um, early on uh, later it was of course but um, once the gold rush started but um, they didn't have a lot of money to spend and there was a lot of competing railway leagues that wanted everyone wanted a railway line to come to their little town for obvious reasons so they built this in stages stages often um, lay stagnant at a particular point in the middle of nowhere for years because the government would change and uh, I mean now we've got a Labor government maybe and that was a Liberal constituency and uh, they've got no interest in building a railway line to serve service a, uh, uh, an electorate that's uh, not part of their uh, government so that's just politics and of course that kind of um, thing continues to this day. So railway lines would often spend 10, 15, 20 years or never be finished at a point in the middle of nowhere but this one did keep going so it arrived here in about 1890 and for about five years this was the railhead. Um, a lot of wool, timber, um, uh, livestock was loaded at this site. Um, from this point Cobb and Co ran a coach as the railhead moved up the coach line kept going with it as the railhead. Um, so lots and lots of activity potentially to find relics uh, here uh, around that early 1900s period. Uh, however, it's been heavily disturbed. Um, the Queensland government paid no regard for this old railway infrastructure when they ripped up lines, they just ripped them up and bulldozed everything into a corner or trucked it off. Most of the railway sites are heavily disturbed or heavily overgrown. This isn't too bad. This isn't too bad, it's detectable. What we've done today is, we've, because it's such a target clutter, which we expected, we've got several coils in the car, but we're using the 5x8s. I've got mine on a Max, Colleen's on the Apex, and she's running in uh, multi-frequency. So I've scouted a few spots, and then I'll keep... I'm kind of the recon. I'll find little hot spots, and then Colleen will come in and clean them up. Well, that's the theory. We're working together like that today, so uh, I hope you're finding the video entertaining. I'm going to go back over there and see what she's found, and then we might go back to the Land Rover and have a cold drink and a bit of lunch. Back shortly. Oh, look at it. <laughs> it's a ripper of a little teaspoon. Yeah. We're going to be able to date that, eh? I think so. Okay, we'll get up close on the hallmark. And uh, it's just in the same spot where all the coins were. It yeah. is too. Yeah, same spot. Into the, we're getting very scratchy signals. There's a bit of mineralization in the soil, but everything's laying at a, a weird angles, of course, because I think it's been pushed here. And uh, there's a lot of iron masking going on. But we're getting through it with yeah. the little coils. Nice work. nice work. Beautiful little spoon. Mm. Okay, I've just got another coin from that just near the other one. Um, in the shadow lane. Oh, you can see it's that's a kangaroo penny. So this would date from the very end of the use of this site as a railway station. Okay. But of course there's potential for 1800s coins in here and I'm sure they'll be here. We haven't struck silver yet. Well, not in coin form. I think that shadow lane is silver. That's a bit hard to make that out, isn't it? Is it a roux? Okay, we'll get some store picks later and uh, identify all the dates on these coins. Well, we've probably been here two and a half hours and we haven't moved from this, literally, this tiny little area. I uh, just got another penny. We'll hit silver soon. I'm confident. This was a one-way signal, so I was obviously sitting... There it is there. 
sitting on its edge in the soil okay we'll give him a bush clean oh it's a rue so it's not as old as we might get here uh, I think it says 55 gee would that be right which queen this would be QE I oh, know 56 is QE2 can't quite make it out there the monarch I think it's a 19 No, sorry. I think it's a 38, which would make more sense. So that's is that that's the first year of the kangaroo penny. Anyway, I'll give it a bush clean, and we'll definitely get a date off it to uh, confirm that. Right, I'll just dig. You witnessed here, or well, you didn't witness it. Thankfully, it was a real train wreck. <laughs> but anyway, cut a long story short, we got a penny out of it amongst a heap of uh, iron straps. We've got a kind of a penny ball going on. That last one was a QE258. This is curious because oh, that's another look. That's I can see it's another QE2. We don't find too many QE2 pre decimals. Pretty sure, yeah, that's QE2. The late Her Majesty, Australian penny. That'll be a 58. Oh well, anything. When was her inauguration? 56, I think. Oh, I don't know. I should know. I do know, but I just don't. Doesn't come to mind. So that's a be a 56 58 up to 64 64 I think was the last pre-decimal penny okay well interesting like I said there's a lot of iron masking going on but the little coil you get a little uh, a bit of a signal in one direction and then none in the other and you just keep moving the soil around and then out comes a coin there you go nice okay still in the same hole as the pennies I've got some lovely piece of white ceramic possibly railway plate look at that uh, rainbow you might be able to see that on the camera I don't know and the head off a safety razor so we're clearly a domestic spot where we're getting coins and crockery fragments and uh, toys okay just went back to the land road and we had a cold drink and a muesli bar for morning tea back to the, exactly the same spot we've been we found the coins and the, that chatelaine and uh, the toys all here I came back and I popped out another penny just because it came in at a slightly different angle and I got a little one-way 86 signal and it's a Commonwealth penny that's a ripper that one all right oh we'll just do a bush clean and get a date and see the one penny there nice okay rather unusually it's another 1934 kg5 I'll have to display it just beside the other one so you don't think I keep digging up the same coin once again very nice condition I'd say this is site this little spot here is heavily disturbed because all these coins were sitting at weird angles every time you come at a different angle I, I can cherry pick a target out of it so we'll keep at it right over here it is it looks like it's a halfpenny and it's an old commonwealth halfpenny I can see that's what it is you can see the uh, ring there with the one half penny um, I'll give it a quick clean in the bush here and get a date I mightn't be able to clean it very well because uh, this heavy clay sort of sticking to the coins and you can see there's a little bit of copper cancer there unfortunately but we'll clean him up and see if we can get a date right now Right, that's as clean as I can get it out here. It's not in real good nick by the look of it, actually. It's pretty corroded, I think. Uh, yeah, that's definitely corrosion. It's not dirt. Anyway, you might be able to see the date there on the video, but I'll subtitle it otherwise. I'll give it a uh, gentle clean at home with a bit of soapy water and a soft toothbrush. Well, this next one's a nice little find. It's definitely a, a period piece, I suppose you'd call it. It's a little decorative pin badge or brooch I think it's floral it's got a line of flowers on it um, obviously dropped by some lady maybe at the railway station as she's waiting for the train into town I can't clean that black uh, clay out of that at the moment I'll have to do it at home and soak it for a while but yeah boy this ground is just concrete and the clumps of grass I mean it's tough for the grass to grow uh, <laughs> the clumps of grass the, the picks just bouncing off them so I'm only swinging, swinging this pick for three hours today, but uh, these blokes were there for years building this railway line, and this isn't even the rock cutting area. This is just <laughs> this is just the river flats. Jesus, hard going. Anyway, I think that's a pretty good little find. I don't know if there's lettering or there or flowers or whatever. Anyway, look, I'll be able to determine what that is when I clean it and magnify it for you. I'll take some still picks at the end.
teaspoon. Yeah. Little um, teaspoon. It's um, on its end. So. Oh, it's sitting vertically in the soil. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Hey, it's. Uh, this is awesome. This would be a dateable find, I think. Could be. Yeah, it looks, looks like, like an electric plate, doesn't it? But yeah. uh, it's been. I'd say the railway mowers hit it or something many years ago. Yeah, just sitting like well, that. Let's, uh, we can save that and get a, we'll definitely get a hallmark and a date off the uh, underneath of the handle. It's yeah. an unusual little shape actually, isn't it? A little yes. teaspoon. Yeah. It's like really elongated. Long and, yeah. yeah. Nice work. Okay, well that was an interesting run of finds for our first sortie. We've just researched this place in the last few days and we thought we'd come out and have a bit of a scratch around. Uh, an unusual, well, I expected to find uh, Edwardian coins definitely and possibly Victorian and they will be here we just haven't isolated that spot so we've got some interesting co finds there the coins from the 20s to the 50s the 50s uh, I mean the place was out of use by early 60s so I'm a bit uh, bamboozled because uh, nothing shows up in the aerial photograph in the early 40s uh, there was only the good shed in the station building so that area where we're getting coins and toys I would say would be a house that logically would have been demolished well obviously was before the 40s because it doesn't show up in the photograph uh, but I'm getting coins from the 50s and I think I suspect some of those toys are 50s and 60s but anyway that just might mean that kids were playing there waiting for a train because the, ra the, the railway was still running but the house was gone anyway we'll, we'll never solve that mystery anyway but doesn't matter um, some nice finds there definitely worth uh, a number of return visits because as I said it's a huge site at several acres really where activity would have taken place and we've only concentrated on one corner where we're getting a few coins so uh, I'll, interest to, I'll be interested to find out if there's any hallmark on that shuttle lane um, we'll see how we go with that other than that thanks for watching everyone and uh, happy Fossicking. bye for now